Today, I'm gonna to show you a process that I didn't even think was possible. In fact, I've even told you guys before that it wasn't possible, but I guess it is. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to restore a corrupted registry without a registry backup. Stay tuned. Okay, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but this process is a game changer. It adds another tool to our belt for saving Windows installs. And you know how I don't like to reload Windows. You know, way back in the day, Windows would automatically back up the Windows registry so that in the event that a corruption was to happen, it was extremely easy to fix. But back in Windows 10, 1803, which came out in 2018, Microsoft took that functionality away. I've shown you guys how to re-enable it before, but that doesn't help if your system's currently broken. So today, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly the same thing without the backup on a system that currently has the backup disabled. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office too. Now, on with the video. Now, there's one caveat to this process working. Your system has to have System Restore enabled because we're gonna be restoring the registry from the volume shadow copy created by System Restore. Now, on that topic, this is another thing that I think I might have been wrong about. I've been railing on Microsoft for at least the last couple of years for disabling System Restore by default on newer installs of Windows. But it turns out, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong now. I don't think it's them doing it. Now, there are a few constraints that are required for System Restore to be disabled by default. If you have a system with a primary drive that is smaller than 128 gigabytes, then System Restore will be, by default, disabled. Also, the Windows installer automatically deletes all older System Restore points when you do an in-place upgrade. This is to stop you from using a System Restore point to go back to the old system before the in-place upgrade, which honestly, I think that's pretty smart. But for the most part, Microsoft does not automatically disable System Restore. But do you know who does? OEMs do. This entire time I've been blaming Microsoft for the actions of Dell, HP, and other cookie cutter OEM manufacturers. So I just have to say, my bad, I guess. It's not Microsoft doing it. In fact, Microsoft is actively developing System Restore as we speak with what will eventually become its successor, a new feature in 25H2 called point in time recovery. This is a feature that doesn't just capture the Windows registry and some key system files, but instead uses volume shadow copy to capture the entire drive, including your documents and installed programs. So, contrary to what I've been claiming for the last year or two, Microsoft is not trying to get rid of System Restore. They're actually trying to make it better. So, good on them. But, with that said, in order to use the process I'm about to show you, System Restore needs to be turned on. So, if it's not, then unfortunately, this won't work for you. But I will show you how to turn it on so that if this ever does happen to you again, you won't have to worry about it. So let's jump on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11 and to, to enable System Restore, it's really easy. You just click the Start button, type in System Restore, click on Create a Restore Point, and right here, as you can see, mine's already turned on. So if yours says on, 
great. You don't have to do anything from this point forward. But if it doesn't, if it says off, all you have to do is push this button right here that says configure, click on that, switch it from disable to turn on, and then give it a percentage. Mine's currently at 4%, but if you set it anywhere from like three to 5%, that should be fine. You don't want it to take up too much space of your system, but this should work out for you. And then once you do that, go ahead and hit okay, and you have system restore enabled. So unfortunately, if system restore is disabled on your system, then this process won't work. But if your system isn't booting into Windows, then you may not even know if system restore is enabled or disabled. So I'll show you how to figure that out from recovery. But let's move on and I'll show you the process so if you do have system restore enabled, you can fix your computer. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do in order to show you how to restore the registry is actually break the registry. And let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm actually cheating a little bit. If I hit Control F right here, you'll see that I'm actually running this in a virtual machine that's full screen. So it's not really an install of Windows like you'd think it would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down real quick. It's gonna take a second to turn off. And then once it turns off, I'm gonna go ahead, destroy the registry in a way that's kind of easy, a lot easier than you'd think it would be. So essentially we're gonna go into settings, we're going to go down to our storage, and then I have to boot this off of a CD. I'm gonna boot it off a Hiren's boot CD, because it's just the easiest way for me to do what I wanna do. And then in VirtualBox, you may not, you're not gonna to need to know this for your specific application, but for me, I have to hit escape to get to the boot manager. And then from there, I have to tell it to boot off of the CD-ROM. And at this point, it's gonna boot into Hiren's boot CD. Now it's gonna take a second for this to boot, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get into Windows, and then I will meet you there once it boots up. Okay, so here we are in Hiren's boot CD. Now this might look a little small on your screen right now. I'm gonna to try to zoom it in so it looks a little bit better, but it's probably gonna look a little messed up because let me zoom out real quick. I'll show you. This is what it actually looks like to me right now. So what we need to do is we need to go into, now you won't have to do this. If your registry is already broken, then you won't need to do that. But if we go down into our Windows directory, and then from Windows, we want to go into System32. And then from System32, we want to go into our config folder. And then from here, this is where your registry is, is stored. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be corrupting the system portion of the registry. And to do that, I'm going to do it the worst way possible. And I do not recommend anybody do this. But let me show you how, what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on System and I'm going to hit Delete. That easy. Now we don't have a system hive any longer. And if we go down here, I'm gonna go ahead and create, I'm gonna go ahead and create a fake system hive. Essentially, it's going to be nothing more than, we're gonna open up Notepad and we're gonna hit save as, go to our desktop and we'll name this system. So what this is gonna give us, is gonna mimic a corrupted system hive. And as you can see, the file is exactly zero kilobytes. So this should mimic a bad system hive. And if you go up, typically we have this folder right here called regback. And this is your, um, this is the old backup folder that used to have the backup files for the registry. But if you open it up, as you can see, it's empty now because Microsoft disabled that. But that's not going to matter because we're going to go ahead and fix it anyway. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and shut this down. And once we shut this down, the next time we try to boot Windows, it's simply gonna go into an automatic repair loop because it won't be able to boot Windows because ultimately we no longer have any system registry hive. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and you'll see that we will have no way to be able to boot it. As you can see, there you go, preparing automatic repair. So at this point, we should have a disabled Windows install with a corrupted system hive. Now, without a registry backup, this would be completely unrecoverable. But luckily, System Restore saves a copy of the registry with Volume Shadow Copy. And we're gonna use that copy of the registry to fix the system registry hive. So, let's do it. All right, so right here, what we're gonna do is go into Advanced Options, and then from Advanced Options, we're gonna go into Troubleshoot, Advanced Options again, and the Command Prompt. And from the command prompt, what we're gonna do is, first off, we need to find out if we even have System Restore enabled. So that's gonna be really important. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what our boot drive actually is. Depending on how many hard drives you have on your computer, this could, this could be different. So the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and run a disk part. 
It's going to take a second to fire that up. And then we're going to go list volume. And this is going to list all the volumes on the disk. Now, the D drive here is obviously my Hiren's boot CD uh, image that is still mounted on this virtual machine. And then the C drive is more than likely, this is a 250 gig volume, this is more than likely going to be my boot drive. Um, the blank with no drive letter, that's FAT32, this is a small 200 megabyte partition. This is more than likely the boot partition. And then E, this is going to be the recovery partition at 730 megs. So from that, we're going to exit out. We know now that our C drive is our boot drive. So if we go into C, you're gonna see the Windows users program files. Once you see those specific directories right there, you'll know that you're in the correct partition. And at this point, we need to find out if system restore is enabled. So to do that, we're gonna go C backslash Windows backslash again, system32. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll do that again, backslash again. And then we're gonna type in VSS admin.exe space list shadows and then this is going to give a list of all the shadow copies that we currently have on the drive now if your list comes up empty and you have nothing then i'm sorry system restore is disabled on your system and you won't be able to use this method to restore your registry but if you do see shadows then what you'll see here is you'll see the creation time of these shadows on each one so as you can see this one was 12 3 at 122 and this one was 12.3 at 1.22, but 40 seconds, and this one's 48 seconds. So this one here is exactly eight seconds newer. So obviously we're gonna use the newest version of our shadow copy. In fact, based on the fact that I'm actually filming this video on the third, it means that this shadow was created just now, right before we broke it. So this, is, this should be the newest version of our shadow. Okay, so once we determine which version of, or which shadow copy we wanna use, we're gonna to want to use the actual shadow copy volume. And that's gonna be this right here. It's the second one down here. This is the original volume, the one that it's a shadow of. And then this is the shadow copy volume. So what you wanna do is you wanna highlight this long copy right here. And it's really hit Control C to copy that. And then what you wanna type in here is you wanna type in copy, space, control V to paste in that same string that you, that you copied from right here. And then you wanna hit backslash. And then you're gonna to have to give the path of what you wanna copy. So in this case, we're gonna do windows, backslash, system32, and unfortunately you can't hit tab to autocomplete your folder like I like to use. And then we're gonna do backslash config, backslash, and then star dot star. We're not gonna copy just the system hive, we're gonna copy the entire registry backup from the volume shadow copy. So from this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit space, and then we're gonna hit C colon backslash windows. Now you can use autocomplete now that you're using a path that's in the actual volume and not a shadow copy. We're gonna go backslash again, system32, backslash config, backslash, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the reg backup folder, and that's where I'm gonna store the copies of the shadow copies or the backups from the registry so that we can work with them a little bit better. And then at that point, go ahead and hit enter, and as you'll see, you'll see 10 files were copied. So we can go CD, Windows, System32, config, and reg backup. And then if we run a directory here, as you can see, now we do have a copy of our registry. And as you can see, our system hive is about 11 megabytes right here. So if we go CD dot dot, and we run a directory again, you'll see that this system hive is about eight kilobytes. Now, the reason why it's eight kilobytes is actually because if you run a directory switch A here, you'll see that it's actually connected to these different files. You got the system, you got the system log one and the system log two. Well, it's essentially attached there. So the actual eight kilobytes is for the system log one. Our actual system hive is zero kilobytes, like I said before. So if we go back into the reg backup folder, run a directory, we wanna copy the system hive back to the directory below it. And to do that, go copy, system, 
and then just hit space dot dot backspace. And the dot dot backslash is this right here. It's just the shortcut in Windows for the previous directory. The single dot is the current directory. The double dot is the previous directory. This is just an easy way to be able to copy something to the directory that you were previously in. So it'll copy it to the config folder. So go ahead and hit enter, hit Y for yes. It'll copy over the system file. The system hive, that the fake system hive that we created, then we're gonna close this, we're gonna turn off the computer, and then at this point, when we go ahead and hit start, it should boot Windows normally. And if you follow these steps on your system, it should also boot Windows normally. And we'll find out if that's the case here in a second, but it should work exactly how it's supposed to. And there we go. Now, if you follow this process, you should get a clean copy of your Windows registry that you can use to fix your system. Now, in this specific situation, we knew the system registry hive was the one that was corrupted, and that's why we only replaced the system hive. However, if you may not know which hive is causing the corruption in your install of Windows, so you can use the same process to copy any of the five standard registry hives from their backups. Unfortunately though, Volume Shadow Copy does not back up the ntuser.dat file from the user hive. Trust me, I checked and it would be really nice if it did. However, the new implementation of System Restore called Point in Time Recovery will back up the user hive. But that's a feature that's going to take a little while before it's mature. In the meantime, Volume Shadow Copy does a great job of backing up the system hives or at least the the main five registry hives so if you have a corrupted user account you're going to have to use a different process to try to recover it but luckily I've already done a video on that too and you can check that one out right here where I go through how to restore a corrupted user account and how to attempt to salvage your user registry hive as always you guys have a great day